Welcome back, everybody, to the first interview of 2023. I'm stoked. Fonzie, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Are you awake? We you caffeinated? A, we have a pretty cool guest today <laughs> we met in 2022. I know. At a very special event. She was just so busy with her calendar, though. We, <laughs> you know, we had, to, we had to wait almost a year to get her here now. <laughs> a few months. Anyways, but I think we're ready to get started. And uh, yeah, unless you have anything else that you want to share, Fonz. No, just go ahead. I'm good. I'm, right. using, I'm using your cup again. I, I, I noticed. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, here we go. We've got hey, I'm Luis. And this is Ponce. And welcome to the Content is Profit before. podcast. In here, you're going to get the insights, accountability, and drive to create consistently and increase revenue. You'll hear from top entrepreneurs, creators, and anything and everything you need to know about content. All this while having a good time. The goal of this podcast is simple. Entertain, educate, and turn your content into profit. Woo. Let's go. Welcome. Happy 2023. Uh, if you're enjoying the show, please go ahead and follow it. Follow it on social media as well. At Abyss Roscoe. So many good things coming in 2023. We wrapped up yearly planning last year. That is right. Uh, don't forget <laughs> like to follow week. in every podcasting <laughs> platform that you might hear us. And if by any chance this show helps you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share it with any of your friends or business colleagues who knows right <laughs> and, and don't forget colleagues. to leave a five star review yeah it could be your mom your dad your brothers <laughs> I mean whoever whoever yeah. business my brother is my business colleague ah, some days <laughs> uh, anyways today's guest I'm super stoked because we met her at an event we're actually it was kind of weird. We got this text that morning. We we're like, hey, guys, you should show up to this event. And uh, we thought we were just going to grab coffee with a good friend that is mm -hmm. part of an amazing community. And then when we showed up, we opened the door and it's like legit like 100 very successful entrepreneurs. And we're like, what is this? Uh, so, you know, we, we rocked it. We walked in like we belonged and we sat in the <laughs> table and we workshopped the heck out of that day. And it was awesome. And we met this incredible guest that we have with you today. And we were so, so impressed. Uh, by what she's doing. Yeah, she definitely made me feel like an underachiever, let me tell you. <laughs> Plus, he came depressed from that, from that nah, trip. Nah. I was excited. I was like, wow, is this the next generation? How cool is this, right? I know. I'm like, I want Luca to be like you. Uh, yeah. But anyway, so yeah, tell me what, what she's done, Fonzie. Tell me what she's done. Yeah, so she actually started as an author by the age of 11. Ooh. She published her first by the age of 11. How crazy is that? And by the age of 12, she already made $20,000 selling that book door to door. How relentless no, is she? Well, we got to clarify if she sold that book door to door or she was selling door to door. She was selling... Selling it. <laughs> it says selling it and made 20K selling, selling it, it door to door. By oh my, okay, it's clarified. She's going like there this we go. behind the camera. Guys, that like, is yes, clearly yes, why that I'm the great. one that read the briefs, <laughs> not my brother. Uh, she's also a public speaker. She has, speak, she has spoken in all stages across the country with millionaires like Tony Robbins, Russell Brunson, Kevin Harrington, one of the original sharks from Shark Tank, Jack Canfield, as well as many more. Well, you also forgot a big Super word impressive. there. Billionaires, Fonzie. Billionaires. Billionaires. And she's also talking to soon to be, eventually <laughs> one day to be, billionaires, <laughs> the biz bros in content Let's and profit. Go. <laughs> All right, guys, please give a warm, warm welcome to Emily, Emily Shay. Oh, Shay, <laughs> Shay, Spanish. Oh, my gosh, what's happening? <laughs> welcome, Emily. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, this is very exciting. <laughs> oh, no, we're so excited to have you here. You're like a superstar already, you know? Emily, I mean, I'm going to be completely honest here. We're so nervous to welcome you onto the digital stage because you've been on so many other stages that are amazing. So what do we do from, you know, one to 10? What, how was the intro? Just saying. Oh, it was it was amazing. It was awesome. You guys did great. No, notice how she didn't say a number. That's what I was saying. Yeah, that's what I was you're so like, good. She's, she's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, I gotta say, when we met you, we were you know you came you came to us. Somebody introduced us. I, I, I think it was Sunny with Bart, and, and they were like, "Hey, you know, Emma's gonna start a podcast coming soon." And she uh, help. As we were talking to you, we're like, "Oh my gosh!" Like she is amazing everything yep. that she's done at this young age and you, just your energy is is amazing and we don't come across many people like that so i just want to acknowledge you. that because you're a great example for people of all ages yeah well, I, thank you very much i will say this i think the the universe just works in just mysterious ways when we met you i don't know if you remember but i was literally reading the book 
that your dad had wrote. And I was like, <laughs> that's just crazy. I was like, this is crazy. We need to have Emily on the show as well. But obviously, we're just going to talk all about you, all about your publishing career, your speaking nice. career. So why don't you kick off, kick off, you know, by sharing a little bit of your story? Like what led you to write a book by the age of 11? You know, at that age, most kids are thinking about what's their next snack going to be. And you're like, hmm, let me publish a book. So how do you get there? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, first off, I would just like to say thank you very much for having me on your show. It was an honor. Uh, be it's an honor being on your show as well as talking to you at the event. Uh, when I met with you guys, you actually just sat and poured into me. Like I remember sitting there and just asking you questions about your podcast and how you run it. And like it is very professional so far, and I'm very impressed. Thank so thank you for pouring into me and for pouring into your audience. Like every every time you you publish your podcast, you're pouring into someone. So. Okay. Good job to you guys. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Um, so basically, I just started as a normal 10-year-old girl. Um, I was selling Girl Scout cookies, and I was very upset at 10 years old. I was like, I am selling all of these cookies and not getting to keep a single dollar in my pocket, getting these <laughs> cheap, lame little toys, and I'm doing all this work. And I, I didn't like it. So um, I knew I had the skills to sell, and my dad was kind of entering into entrepreneurship, and I asked him, like, what can I do? How can I make money? And um, he told me to write a book. Mm. I didn't believe that I could do it at first. I was like, what? Like, how is, how is that even possible? Like, I'm 11 years old. I'm not even through English yet. Um, but uh, it's just good to have people that can encourage you and tell you what's possible. Yeah. And so I want to be that to other people that awesome. if I can write a book at 11, you can write a book at any age. It's completely <laughs> possible. But I wrote the book and uh, decided to sell it door to door. And I you know, worked hard, got it nine hours in and you know, made over $20,000 selling door to door, learned a lot of very useful processes along the way on selling and everything. That's wow. Have you sold $20,000 door to door, Fonzie? Uh, no, not I me, have not. I mean, I remember like when we first started selling anything, um, it was actually, we were selling a soccer program to parents on daycare. So and we it were, wasn't at 11, let me tell uh, you. It wasn't at 11. We were <laughs> like, you know, uh, 24, 25 maybe. And I remember being terrified. Just to walk in there, the owner of the company, he would drive with us, right? And he would like drop us off in the in the thing. And it's like, hey, we need, you know, 30 memberships to start doing this. And this were like 25 bucks a month membership kind of deal. And I remember just being terrified of standing there and talking to these parents to, with a thing that we loved. Like we love soccer. We love the coaching. We yep. love the kids. And it was just really, really scary. So like what was for you like at that young age, right? Walking through like maybe the first few houses, right? Uh, and, and talking about them, about your book and the thing that you created, right? A lot of creators that we talk about and even businesses, CEOs of very successful companies are terrified of putting their face in front of a camera and start talking. And, uh, so I can even imagine, right. You coming in with this ama amazing creation, your own creation, your own words, your own thoughts, and started putting it, you know, out there. Like what, what, what did that feel and what went through your head and, and how do you manage that process? Well, I will say that it was indeed very scary and that in sales, people can be brutal. Even when you're 11 years old or 30 years old, it doesn't matter. People are mean. Um, but the great thing about sales is that it's hard. And the reason, and because it's hard, you learn to be tough. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the great things about going through sales, even though it's difficult. Uh, you learn to overcome your other fears. Uh, so yes, I was very afraid going up to my first door. It was very scary, but, um, I just prepared myself. I created my pitch. And then the great thing was that I had something to aim towards every day, which kept me going. So in the beginning of the day, when I would start selling, I always set a goal and I'd be like, I don't care if it's nine o'clock and every single, you know, door is shut down. I'm not stopping until I make this much money at this mm -hmm. time. So when I first started selling, I was making $60 an hour. When I stopped selling, I was making $120 an hour wow. because I just kept leveling wow. up. And then uh, another thing that's really, really, I'm just going to share about sales that was really key is um, every time I would go sell something, I would take like a mental note of my pitch, what I would say, and then how the person would respond. And I would go back to my coach or my dad was my coach at the time. And I'd be like, hey, I said this, I did this. They responded with this. And he would be like, here, tweak this, you know, say this a little differently, go back and do it again. Yeah. And so uh, it taught me a very valuable lesson about, about perfecting my craft. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So interesting. I'm curious. Do you still remember the pitch? I do. I do. I, 
very vaguely. It's been quite a few years, hey, can, but can, I, can it's, it's vaguely, online somewhere. Can we vaguely hear it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll try my best. All right. Knock, knock. We open Hi, the- my name is Emily. I am uh, 12 years old and I wrote this book. Hand them the book. Keynote. You want them to uh-huh. touch the product. Sorry. No, no, that's perfect. Um, my, name is, <laughs> my name is Emily. I wrote this book. It's called The Five Steps to the Perfect Sleepover. And I tell them to look through it. And then uh, I would just wait. I'd be like, be like, okay, nice. so what do you want? I'd be like, well, it's $15. It would make a great gift. You can, how would you like to pay? <laughs> There's no yes or no. Easy peasy. Yeah. <laughs> it's very simple. I, I, very simple I, I like the, the implied sale already. You know, <laughs> how would you like to pay? I think that's very important. Yeah. yeah. And Emily, I just think you just shared a, an amazing framework for people, you know, that maybe mm-hmm. if they're in this position and they want to start selling, right, they will do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. The secret yeah. sauce. Yep. So um, cool. I, and I love the topic, by the way. I would be like, I have a three-year-old now, so I, I want that book. Uh, I, you got to send me that link on Amazon. Yeah. So just remember. Oh, for sure. <laughs> just remember that if he's selling for you, right, it's, it's child labor. So make him create something to sell for him, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. But you can actually employ your... your uh, you your, can, yeah, yeah true, tw- true, tw- true. Up to $12,000. But anyways, uh, yeah, <laughs> Emily, it's super exciting, right? My, I have a question. Like, it was door-to-door your choice or was it, you know, your coach and dad at the t- like your dad or your coach at the time? Like, wh- why was it door-to-door and not maybe, hey, I'm going to go try and sell this online, right? Because we see, especially when we first started with, uh, with the agency, we went straight to online, right? We Well, it was a combination, but then... Because we have some relationships built in the in the I guess brick and mortar world, we knocked on some doors, but we never went on. You know, hey, I don't know this guy. Let me go knock on on their business. It was more on the we take and I'm doing air quotation the safe side of online, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, right. why was it door to door? Was that on purpose? Yeah. So one, uh, I didn't really know about the um, website or ClickFunnels community, and I was 11 years old. Um, so I didn't really have any experience with that, which I definitely could have learned and picked up really fast, but I had $0 to my name. I'm 11 years old. So, um, I just kind of wanted, I think it was more my dad that told me that I should just go door to door, um, because he, he wasn't handing me anything or letting me, you know, um, you know, pay for me to get a website up and all this other stuff. But it was just like, write the book, be resourceful. And go awesome. knock on doors and make money. So the whole goal of writing the book and doing it door to door was to raise money to eventually start my own business. That's amazing. Wow. That so was cool. What was the transition after that, right? Because now you're on stages with the best in the world, right? Speaking at your young age. Um, and, you know, maybe like under the uh, under the glasses of somebody that is a business owner that wants to start putting their message out there that might be finding some friction, right? Um, they might be scared right now. They, even though they have a very successful business, but they have uh, those fears, right, of selling, t- telling their message, telling their story, sharing what their customers are doing, their successes, sometimes even their uh, their pitfalls, right? What would you say to that on that, trans- like based on that transition that you made from door-to-door sales and all these teachings and learnings to now speaking on stages? Right. Um, well, I can say I've, I've spoken on quite a few stages, as you've said before, but I and I've been doing this for, you know, more, probably half my life um, is speaking yeah. and it doesn't really get easier. I don't I still get nervous before I get on stage. But something when I first started and now my dad would always tell me is I would look look at my dad and I would say, Dad, I'm scared. And he would say, Emily, how do we do it? And I knew the answer. He said, I said, we do it afraid. Mm. And so there's something so valuable about knowing that no matter what you do in life, if it's new, it's going to be uncomfortable and you're going to be scared. But sometimes you don't have to, you don't get to wait until the fear goes away because it won't. You just have to do it afraid. You just have to prepare yourself, know that you're prepared and do it anyways. Yeah, I love it. I was just on a call with uh, an amazing member of a community. Her name is Pratiti. Shout out to Pratiti. We'll be on her show soon. But she uh, she spent years. I remember like having a first conversation with her, trying to launch her her podcast, and and she was like so fearful of something like this, right? 
And I love what you said, like, and what you and your dad said, we do it afraid. I, I wrote it here. I'm going to put it in there because every single day, right, whether that's sales, whether that's conversation, that really hard conversation that we need to have sometimes, um, I think that's a really cool mantra to be like, hey, we still do it, right? We go ahead. And uh, and he threw me back to when we were playing soccer. I remember the drive from our house to any soccer uh, field that we would have, we would drive with our dad, and our dad, it, if if you know, if you heard some stories of him, he's a very uh, interesting dude. We love him to death, mm-hmm. but he was also very strict. And I just remember being so nervous every single time that we would go to a game, just uh, us, just two, because I knew that he was gonna be like right there. And the dream was to play professional soccer. And even though we loved the sport, it was so nerve wracking to go out. I remember the butterflies, but guess what? As soon as you step into the field, no matter what you will feel like you will perform. Right. And in a sense, when we started doing our, our Facebook lives on how we started the show a while back, uh, it was very similar. Right. And I just remember that feeling and I'm like, well, I still go play. So Mm -hmm. why not still go publish? So, uh, I love how you summarized it and, and hopefully that could be also, uh, a massive boulder for people to grab on and be like, perfect. I'm going to go and publish. I'm going to, you know, tell my truth and go and go out there and, and perform. So thank you. Right. Exactly. That's so good. So I'm, I'm curious on, um, what do you talk about when you go on stage? Like what is your main topic? Who's your audience and what was your goal with it? Right? Like, I'm sure you have a game plan here. Uh, maybe the game plan is just to step in as many stages as you can for the rest of your life. Or you want this to be kind of like a stepping stone to something, I don't know, maybe in your mind, something even greater that you want to achieve. Right. Uh, Well, I started with writing a book, but my passion, I found out my passion and um, I think my my purpose is really speaking. Uh, How I do that is uh, it depends. It's very different. So I've spoken on several big entrepreneurial stages, which is kind of the main place I like to be because I have so much experience. I mean, so much experience for my age <laughs> in that realm. Um, uh, but it depends. I, I will go and speak and I will simply inspire if the crowd needs inspiration or I will go and I will, I will give a motivational speech. But sometimes I go and I've had um, places where people hire me and I'll come um, and I'll do like a soft pitch, like a soft close right at the end of their, of their event. And their closing percentage increases every time that I come to their event as opposed wow. to when it, when I'm not at their event. So like all the sales tips that I learned going door to door apply in public speaking. So businesses hire me to increase their closing percentage. Um, but not only that, my main goal is to help people. So if I don't believe in the product, I'm not going to go and, and sell, help Absolutely. them sell their thing. But I believe in helping people. And I feel like it is much easier to help a large amount of people in less time when you talk to a crowd yeah. versus when you talk to one-on-one. Mm. I, that, that's amazing. And I'm very curious, right? Like as a, I mean, if you can do it, literally anybody can do it. My, my thought, the thought that comes to mind when you say, Hey, I go into companies and events to increase the sales, you know, percent, the, the closing percentage and this and inspire people, right? Have you ever encountered some companies maybe that you're talking to and they don't seem to respond to you? Like, how do, how do you go through that process? Right? Like, uh, there's, I guess I'm, I might be wrong. Right. But maybe a company looks at you and be like, wow, she's so young. Like, how is they going to help us, right? And I guess that's all part of your process and your pitch and your story and the things that, that you do so well. But, you know, for somebody that might not know you, how do you go through that process? I, how do you decide who do you talk to? Who, like, uh, are they even worth, you know, you to go there? Like, what's that process looks like? Because a lot of people, I'm coming from a place of curiosity in a sense that when we first started selling social media marketing agencies like five years ago, we had no idea what we were doing, right? We would be like, we're, we're here, we're here to learn, right? And, uh, and we're going to go execute. And we had a base of knowledge, but then we, we were willing to do this. And, and we, we had some awesome results as we started executing, right? But initially, I remember being so scared to go out and, and ask for that just because uh, I never did it. Or maybe because of the answer of, some, of a business that we're trying to pitch being very negative, right? So how how's that process for you especially being so young and going after these companies right well i um i'm gonna be completely honest i don't actually go and seek Mm -hmm. for companies to um have me speak at their event i'm almost every event that i've spoken at has been based on referral amazing and my results speak for themselves yes so uh i just kind of got found out after i put in the work with my book i started a company with another kid and did joint venture and got found out in 
I was allowed to speak on a few stages. And just because of um, the way that I performed and, you know, I perfected my craft and gave good Absolutely. results. Absolutely. So they like people in the crowd would ask me to speak. And then if I speak on a podcast, people ask me to speak. like it just is all referral based for me. It's not full time. Um, but Amazing. for I have had like younger friends that have wanted to start and have trouble like getting out of their comfort zone and talking to people. Um, and I think that the the thing that I that I tell them, which is the most comforting thing about entrepreneurship is that it's just numbers. So if if you talk to, mm -hmm. if I knew this when I sold books and I know this when I'm on stage and I know this when I'm, you know, if for my friends that are, you know, sending messages or cold outreaching to people, if you talk to 10 people, somebody's gonna say yes, somebody. And if you talk to a hundred people, the chances are more likely that more people are gonna say yes. So don't think it as like rejection or yes or no, or what if this person doesn't say yes? Cause lots of people told me, no, I still made $20,000. Yeah. I still got to speak all over the country. So many people didn't buy my book, but that's okay. Cause it's just numbers. It's not yeah. how many people said no, it's how many people said yes. Yes. Mm. Let's go. Yeah. I love the, <laughs> the, the perception, right? A lot of people just yeah. focus on the negative and they're like, oh, but so many people told me no. Yeah. But what about the people that did say yes? Right. And how yeah. you impacted and potentially change those people's lives. Um, I'm pretty curious too. I feel like you have such a strong pull to have a personal brand, right? Online. Uh, again, how we met was you wanting to start your podcast. So I'm curious, like, where are you going to go with that, right? I mean, it's absolutely amazing that most of your opportunities come through referrals. Obviously, that speaks volumes of what you do. Now I'm curious on how are you going to let the world know about Emily Shea, right? Are you going to put yourself out there and try to reach the masses through, you know, either your podcast, uh, clips, reels, whatever it is? Yes. Um, I still plan on, uh, I still plan on launching my podcast this year, actually. I also, my plan on speaking to the masses is, is speaking and yeah. that's uh, what I want to do. So the more stages that I can get on, yeah. uh, the more people that I can get in front of, the more I can share, you know, messages of, of hope and inspiration. Yes. Yeah, that is so cool. Are, are you planning on doing something? Like, it, it sounds like your audience is, you know, mostly the, like, already cemented entrepreneurs. And I'm just going to mm -hmm. put this for a reference, I guess. And this is what I'm imagining in my head. is that just people around their age, right? I, I'll say 25 older that have businesses and whatnot. Are you planning on doing something for, you know, like people, uh, kids more your age, right? I mean, you're, you're what right now? 17. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, right? oh no, I just turned 18. Oh, you just Sorry. turned 18. Hey, congrats. Let's go. <laughs> Happy <laughs> birthday. Uh, so, but you know, are you, are you planning on doing something as well for, you know, the up, up and coming generation and motivate them in a way that you were motivated to do all these things? Uh, yes, I, I don't have any specific plans, uh, for, intentionally for motivating uh that age group but yes i would i would love to eventually do something to motivate that age group uh my my kind of philosophy i guess is just to speak and people will come mm, yeah i mean it's it's been amazing right with uh with your, what you've done and your story and the people that you've been able to and the stages that you've been able yeah. to be um i remember when after we talked on the on the mastermind the workshop side Um, I remember like, they were like, oh my gosh, that was her like a year ago on the, on fun hacking live stage. And it was, uh, it was really cool. So, um, Emily, thank you so much for coming in. There's so many lessons, right? The, and yep. you know, we do believe that we can learn from any single person in here. You know, I learned from, uh, from my three year old every single day. And uh, today was amazing. I, I wrote yeah. so many, a bunch of notes and, uh, I take away the, we do it afraid. That was my favorite thing today. Yeah. Uh, because so many times we feel that way. Yeah. One more core thing, if I can, Absolutely. Uh, for everyone else on the show, especially those of younger or older age, I always say age is just a number. And, you know, whether you're, you know, five or whether you're 50 or any age, don't be afraid to start and don't be afraid to do the things that are hard or difficult. Like go live your dream and don't wait. Mm, that. That's my end inspiration for all of you. If I can do it at 11, anyone can do it. Yes. Absolutely. You've definitely have inspired at least me. I'm, I'm not, I can't talk for my brother, but <laughs> yes, you've definitely yeah. inspired me. So I really appreciate it. 
Um, I was going to say a joke earlier. I was going to be, when you were like, we can learn about everybody. I'm like, yeah, I've learned a lot everybody except from you. <laughs> okay. I thought about the same joke. <laughs> I just didn't say it. Yeah, I, 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 like, I, I had to bring it back. I had to. I had to. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Emily, I did learn quite a few things from you. I'm really thankful. Thank you so much. Uh, and I can't wait to hear your podcast and also see your growth. You know, what other stages are you going to be speaking at in 2023 and, you know, years to come? I think you're going to be absolutely amazing. So that, thank you so much. That's right. Thank Fun. you very much. Absolutely. And uh, we're in Florida, so we, we need to go <laughs> hang out, you know, bring the families together and do something. But Yes, for sure. <laughs> I know. Fonzie escapes to Virginia once in a while, but it's okay. It's to bad. the cold. To the cold. Anything else, Fonzie, before we head out? Uh, no, I think I just, yeah, just said everything. Thank you so much. <laughs> Sounds good. With that, guys, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite platform and follow us on social media. i Beast Rose Co. That is <laughs> right. And if Emily here help you move one step closer towards your goal, please don't forget to share this episode and, and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys.